All right, chapter eight. Why should I ask questions? And what types of questions should I ask? Asking questions when counseling your client is the fundamental and the strategic approach that offers several benefits to you and to your client. But most importantly, asking the right question is crucial for understanding your client's needs, their preferences, and their goals. So I'm going to go through a couple of sample questions. Now understand, these questions may not all apply to your specific situation. There may be a ton more questions that you have. These are just some of the initial or sample questions that will help you get your juices flowing and thinking about it. So during the initial consultation, there's going to be some general background questions you want to ask. Most notably, the first question that you should ask, the first question that I've always asked, is are you working with another real estate professional? I think that is a very paramount question because one, it kind of establishes the guide for you. If they come back and say, well, yeah, but he's sick today, then that's going to take your conversation in a whole different direction. And that's a whole other class. But the first question is, are you working with another real estate professional? What motivated you to start this process? Did you get a new job? Did you run into some money? Are you selling because you got a new job? Have you bought or sold property before? This question would directly influence on maybe how much education you have to give. If they are living in an apartment and they have never bought a home before, you've got a first time home buyer on your hands. If they are a seasoned investor, you may have less education to deal with. Now, dealing with buyers, I think there's probably three or four different areas of questions that you should ask. One would be like their property preference. What type of property are you looking for? Home, a condo, uh, things of that nature. Are there specific features that are essential to you? Go back to that list of have, must haves, and wants. What's your preferred location? There's budget questions. What's your budget for the purchase? Have you been pre-approved for a mortgage? Are you considering any other financing options or assistance programs? You've got timeline questions. What is your timeline for closing on their property? Are there any specific events or deadlines that would influence this? We had a deal several weeks ago where the day of closing ended up getting scheduled right in the middle of the weekly vacation of the sellers who went out of the country. Um, now, it was a situation of uh, what do I want to Keystone Comedy events where they got pushed and then it got pushed. And then the third time it got pushed, it was pushed into the middle of their vacation. So, you know, are there deadlines that we have to meet? Uh, because we theoretically could have closed that Wednesday, but we had to wait till the following Monday simply because the sellers were out of town. Future planning questions you may ask. Uh, what are there future changes in your life that might impact your housing needs? Are you going to have children? Maybe we need to look at more bedrooms. Are your children grown and going to be moving out soon? And you're going to be left with a whole bunch of extra bedrooms. So those are some questions that you may have to ask. Now for the sellers, once again, you've got three or four different areas which could change, but typically property details. You know, are there any recent renovations to your property? Can you describe your property to me? What's the size? What's the layout? Are there any special features? You've got pricing strategy questions. What's your expected timeline for selling? Have you had a professional appraiser or any valuation done? How much do you owe on the property? These are kind of questions that would help establish a pricing strategy. What about motivational questions? What's motivating you to sell at this time? Are there any specific goals? 
Like we had a deal several years ago where the guy came into us and said, hey, look, I'll pay a 10 percent commission if you can get a buyer within the first 14 days because my wife got transferred in the military and we're out of here. And we did it. All right. Are there future housing plans? Maybe you're going to be able to turn this seller into a buyer on the next property. Are you going to be moving to another property? Are there any specific requirements for the next property? The fourth topic is going to be in that negotiation and offers kind of thing. Uh, what are the terms that's most important to you? Is it a quick turnaround? Is it a quick closing? Is it a large sum of money? You know, is it uh, post-closing possession? All of these things are going to be questions you need to know and find out during your counseling process. How would you like us to handle multiple offers? That's a good question. Uh, what are your expectations regarding the negotiation? How do you want me to contact you? That's a big question. Is it a phone call? Do you text? Do you want the email? Uh, do you prefer some social media platform like direct messaging? Things of that nature. When it comes to the closing, there's going to be questions. Do you have a preferred closing date? Now, that could be either side buyers or sellers. Once again, are there any time sensitive considerations? You've got legal questions you may have to discuss with them. Have you consulted an attorney or an accountant or any other professional regarding this transaction? Post-closing plans, are there specific arrangements? Do you want post-closing possession? Have you got the movers truck set up? What about electricity and utilities? When do they get turned on if they're a buyer? When do they get turned off if they're a seller? There could be just overall client experience questions that you may have. How do you prefer to communicate? That's a popular one, believe it or not. In the old days, <laughs> you know, long time ago, like 20 years, when there was just home phones, that might have been the preference. Now there's all kinds of other ways. Client satisfaction questions. How, are you satisfied with the service? Would you be willing to provide a testimonial? Believe it or not, that is a question you should actually ask. There are many, many platforms out there now that you can actually send an email to your client after the transaction that will literally ask them to give a testimonial or give a review for you that you can use. Trustpilot, obviously, Google reviews, there's dozens of them. So asking these types of questions is going to help you tailor your service to your client's unique situation. Once again, ensuring a more personalized and successful real estate transaction. Plus, it also makes the client feel like they have been heard and that you are their lead team member. And it demonstrates a commitment to understanding their specific needs.